guest, I am so excited to have you joining me today. Grab your coffee and chat with me for a couple of minutes. Today we're going to be talking about a current issue that seems to be everywhere. We're talking about transgenderism and the identity crisis that's happening in our culture and it seems to be unraveling even daily. What seems like uh, was just happening very sparsely for a while. Uh, you can't go out in public without seeing um, these issues in our faces all of the time. And I want to talk about this because I really believe that what we're seeing is a product of uh, just godlessness, obviously, and a lack of people really understanding their identity in Christ. And so we're going to look at what the Bible says on how to approach this. We're going to look at what truly transgender uh, means and how how we are going to be dealing with it as a society as a whole. So uh, get your coffee, like I said, and let's talk about this issue. It's been a hot topic in the news um, as uh, Target itself has launched the whole bathing suit campaign. We're seeing companies start to come out of the woodwork uh, with these transgender bathing suits. Um, and, and not only transgender bathing suits, which is super confusing as a culture, it seems like, um, you know, society in and of itself has been tilting towards this way for a while, but it's been coming in just little trickles, almost desensitizing us as Christians, as the Bible says uh, that culture tries to do a little bit at a time, getting us to acclimate to what we would never, ever, ever uh, receive, that we've become slowly just comfortable with it. And, and you know, that's not something new. All throughout the Bible, the people of God were called to be set apart. But, uh, but as they were around different cultures, slowly they would start to adapt to the culture around them. And so uh, understanding from a biblical point of view what is going on in America is so important to stay aware of our surroundings, that we're not getting taken up in the culture, that our call to love is defined in a way that it's balanced by truth and understanding. And so uh, you get two sides of the spectrum. You get the people that think that Christians are isolating and bigots and that they hate people. And then you get the other side of the spectrum of, of people who, um, you know, just accept everything as, as everything's just okay. And so it's balancing grace and truth and understanding that through a perspective of love, as Jesus would approach this matter, uh, people actually can be called back uh, to who they've been created to be in Jesus Christ. And so understanding that God loves people, God has a plan and a purpose for every human. There's not one life that is formed that God hasn't seen, that he hasn't knit together in their mother's womb, that he has a plan and a purpose for their life. And so it's really important that we first understand that as we dive into this topic. This isn't about hating a, a group of people. This is a call to truth and a call to uh, coming against culture as it's trying to overwhelm us, uh, specifically here in America. And so we've we've slowly seen uh, this this topic of transgender uh, peek into our culture. And so most recently it's become blatant uh, with with big large companies such as Target, Disney, um, different uh, different sports apparel uh, companies coming out. but but it, it takes it a step further. We've kind of as Christians been like, yeah, 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 but but it's taken it a step further when it started to target our children. And so that's what some of these companies have started to do. They've just blatantly come out and, and attacked our children with these issues. And, and so it's time that more than ever that we become alert and aware of these things. We've, with Target, Christians and people across America, not only Christians, but have said it's enough is enough. We're going to pick it with our pockets. We're not going to support these companies anymore that enough is enough. But has it been too late? Have we let the boundary lines go too far? And so uh, understanding that, that that's great, that we stand up for for what's right. But the true resolve for America isn't about just holding back our dollar. Our true uh, resolve in this issue is going to be standing in the truth of the gospel and understanding the agenda of the world. And so, you know, understanding that God has created us in his image. And in, in Genesis 1:27, it says, God created 
mankind in his image, that he didn't make a mistake, that he created them male and female in unique ways. And and understanding that gender is, is more than just what you feel like in the moment. Gender is how God created you, male and female. And this whole word transgender has come um, on the scene more and more. Uh, we have a family member who is actually transgender, which has caused me to even lean into studying it praying into it um, more than ever. And so truly uh, what would at first as Christians maybe alarm us or cause disgust in us has truly in my heart uh, become something that I am just really distraught about in the spirit of understanding that, that it's an identity crisis, that these people, these children that are dealing with um, what what the world calls dysmorphia, uh, gender dysmorphia is actually um, them not liking who God created them to be. That in some way dysmorphia means that they see themselves uh, different or they see themselves not not uh, worthy of something. So they don't like something about themselves. If you've seen somebody who has body dysmorphia, it lends towards an eating disorder where they think that they're just fat, they're just fat, they're just fat. No, they're, they're dealing with an image dysmorphia that they see themselves differently than the, what reality is. And so in the transgender conversation, you're going to hear the word uh, gender dysmorphia, where they look in the mirror and they see themselves uh, in a body that they don't feel like is them, which causes all sorts of tension, self-hatred, depression. In fact, statistically, uh, if transgenderism is the answer, uh, statistically we see that even when somebody does uh, give in to these tendencies and starts the change of their body, whether that's taking hormones or whether that's surgeries or whatever it is, that it doesn't make them feel better, it actually makes them feel worse. In fact, the suicide rate is so high. And, and people who are born female who change to a male gender, 85.5 have considered suicide after, and 42.7% have actually attempted suicide after they have changed their bodies in some way. Those who are born male and convert to female, 77.2% have considered suicide, and 372 have attempted suicide suicide. So those numbers in and of themselves tell us it's deeper than just dysmorphia, that it's a true identity crisis, that they're finding, trying to find their identity in something other than Christ, that they're buying into a lie. And um, as, as I have a family member who is in their young 20s, I started to really investigate and research this topic. This family member not only has dealt with transgenderism uh, for a while, but um, and having conversations with this person and trying to understand and trying to, to bring the gospel into the conversation was very frustrating because the conversation often went, and you'll find this in, in many conversations that you have uh, on, on the topic of transgenderism and Christianity of why would God create me like this if he's not okay with it? Why would God create me with these feelings if he wasn't okay with me being this way? And so I want to talk a little bit about that, about that lie and how we can really get to the heart and the root of the issue here. So as I started to dive into this topic, um, this family member is also uh, on, on the spectrum of autism. And so um, I thought it was very interesting, the connection between uh, this 20-some this age uh, generation that, that we're seeing now is very proficient in the area of transgenderism. So especially in the, the, the teens now up until probably 30, you're seeing an increase of this. If you're out and about, you're going to see many people maybe who are transgender, at least in our community, who are in that age range. And so I thought it was interesting, not, not saying that everybody who is a transgender has autism, but it, the, the statistics are staggering in the amount of uh, people who struggle with autism and, and who convert to transgenderism. Now follow me in this. Now in the late 90s, in the early 2000s, there was a high increase um, in autism. 
autism awareness, the high cases diagnosed of autism, and all of a sudden the world is like, what's going on with this? And many people were trying to connect um, shots and immunizations with a rise and a spike in autistic a diagnosis. And so as we've seen this play out, the same generation that were babies and toddlers that were experiencing this spike in autism are now a lot of the adults that we're seeing who are dealing with transgenderism. And, and let me just dive into this here for a minute. You might disagree with me. I'm just telling you from what I have studied statistically, it is staggering. And then if you back it up and you say, wait a second, as an autistic child, what are the things that they're dealing with? They're dealing with not knowing how to connect. They're not. They're dealing with feeling like they're the outcast. They're dealing with not being able to show their emotions, being ostracized, made fun of. And oftentimes, especially in females, um, autism is characterized by a lack of emotion or connection. And so um, this can be misunderstood as not leaning into the female side of who you are. It can come off as maybe that you're that you would be better off as a boy or fitting in with the boys. And so they started to experience this loss of identity where they're not fitting in, where they're ostracized. And so all of a sudden they don't like who they are and they're like, well maybe I am meant to be the opposite sex. Maybe if I were just a guy, I would fit in better. Or, you know, or maybe it's that young boy who he feels uh, maybe a little more emotional. And so maybe even if he's not autistic, think about this for a minute. And the attack on our young people, our children, when a child is growing up, most little boys don't really fully come into their manhood until uh, much later in life. In those beginning years especially, they're very uh, much identified through their mother. They're very nurtured. Um, they're very uh, in relation to uh, the maternal instincts of their mother. And so if you take a little boy and you tell them, because you like to bake cookies in the kitchen with your mom, uh, maybe you're transgender. Maybe you're not a boy. Maybe you're you're more of a girl. You need to lean into that as a little boy. Or maybe as a little boy, your mom uh, likes to wear pretty things. So, so you know, you, you like that about her. And, and all of a sudden, society is labeling you something that you're not. So this is where culture comes in now because uh, culture is now trying to pigeonhole our children into something that they're truly not. God created them a specific way. And through right nurturing and Christian faith, we're growing them and rearing them in the things of God. We're giving them space to become who God has created them to be. The problem is culture is intervening and saying, this is what you are now. And so while the lie is we're giving these children freedom of expression and freedom to, to really explore their gender, to really explore uh, you know, what they really want to be, they're actually putting them in a hole that they were never supposed to be in, that they're labeling them at a young age, which is causing confusion. If you take that small child who maybe is on the spectrum of autism or or maybe is just questioning why uh, as a little girl you think um you know somebody is pretty it's okay to think another female is pretty without being uh, attracted to the same sex like that's normal that's just that's just acknowledging god's creation is beautiful a lot of times you know little girls might look at a woman and, and admire her in that way that doesn't mean that you have same sex attraction but, but culture is coming in and trying to label and pigeonhole us into that and redefining our image. And this wasn't new. I mean, all of these issues go way, way back deep into the Bible. It's a result of sin. It's a result of a godless society. It's a result of an agenda of this world. And so we see it clear back uh, in the Bible, even in the book of Psalms in 106.20, it says they traded their glorious God for an image of a bull. What does it say there? It says that we're trading the glorious image of God to worship something else, to be focused on something else, that we're departing from who God created us to be. And simultaneously, culture is coming in and saying, here, let me give you something else to be. Let me give you another image to worship and conform to.
And that's the attack that is on our children today, that the enemy is coming in. Uh, that's an attack on society as a whole to try to re-identify us, to try to say, you know what? If you don't fit in, if you like, if you're a girl and you like sports more than you like baking, then you you must have a, a gender issue. You must be going for, through some sort of dysmorphia. And and not only are you feeling this way, but here's the drugs to change you. Here, let me pay for the medical condition. Do you know that years, decades ago, uh, that any sort of dysmorphia, and even today, if you look up the term dysmorphia, but specifically gender dysmorphia was a medical condition. It was a mental condition that they would actually say, look, this is a mindset. It's a psychological condition. Uh, it's not your reality. But today we are saying, let me, let me actually help you in this. We're changing society to cater to a mental condition rather than speaking truth and bringing change, rather than coming in and supporting uh, them, understanding who they are, who they're created to be. We have a whole generation who is going through the motions that are, they're just as miserable and just as lost and just as uh, dysmorphiated as ever. Because even if they've gone through the physical changes, it hasn't created the God identity that they need to be whole, that God has called people to wholeness through knowing him. And the enemy is always a voice that is going to try to talk you out of who God created you to be. The Bible says all throughout Jeremiah in the book of Psalms that God knit you together in your mother's womb, that he created you on purpose for a purpose. And, and to buy into a lie, anything other than that is bringing people into a place where they're disconnected from God, that they're depressed, that they're miserable, that they don't fit into society, that they now blame society on their lack of acceptance. Um, and they do crazy things, mass shooting, high statistics of uh, autism or through somebody who maybe is going through a transgender, all identity issues, all not finding out their God creation, feeling uh, rejected by society because they haven't connected to who God has created them to be. And so as we dive into this topic, as we understand as Christians uh, the attack of, of what is going on, the answer isn't maybe a political answer. Yes, we need to hold our lines. We need to, to stand for what is right. But the heart of it is seeing a generation turning back to God. Uh, we visited the Asbury Revival, I think it was back in February, and we took our kids. And what I loved about this move of God, it was on a college campus, and uh, the, the leadership there was criticized for the way they did things. And who knows you know, what was right or wrong or what the Christian world would have done if they were in that position. But they really felt like they needed to guard that particular move of God for the younger generation. And I thought that that was uh, noteworthy as we were there and thinking, what God, what are you doing in this younger generation? And I've shared before, it wasn't bells and whistles. It was acoustic worship. It was nothing fancy. A lot of times it was old hymns. Uh, there wasn't smoke and fog and lights. It was very simple. And as my children sat in those services for three or four hours, they walked away and what the conversation went like was this. I felt like it was just me and God. I felt like God was doing a work in me. Um, and, and those conversations really started to surface as God was re-identifying them and who he was in a world and a culture that was telling them that they were a million different things and a culture that was trying to maybe redefine our youth and and tell them that, that, that they need to be a male when they're a female and a female when they're a male and, and that maybe they they need to just give in to their same sex attraction and, and it's okay to be this and that. It's, it's a move of God where God was saying, come back to me. Let me identify you. Find your identity in me. And when you do that, you're going to find the peace and the wholeness that I've created you to walk in. And I thought it was interesting is that move of God was all about bringing the youth to their identity in Christ. I thought, isn't that just a revealer of what God is trying to do on the earth today? That as the enemy's trying to bring 
a different uh, definition of what their identity should be is he's trying to redefine the image of who they have been created after how God is calling uh, this this generation back with a move of his spirit to really understanding who he is to walk out in the power of that and I think about first Samuel 17 I think about the enemy who was on the field in the form of a giant named Goliath and he was surround the, the people of God were surrounding the armies of Israel were surrounding him and he just started spewing things on them uh, you know you're weak who do you think you are you're, he was attacking their identity because if the enemy can take you out of your identity he takes you out of a position of authority and that's what his play is in these last days to take people to disconnect them from who they are in Christ and the authority that that brings and causing them to be confused going down paths of sin depression self-hatred self-harm and, and really disconnecting from a God who wants to bring them into the fullness of a relationship and an identity in him and so Understanding that gives us fresh perspective now that, that it's not an attack of uh, us not loving people because we don't accept them as, as they're changing maybe from a male to a female or a female to a male. It, it's us saying, look, you've been created for so much more. God loves you. Uh, he's the one that you're going to find your wholeness in. He's the one that you're going to find peace in. And, and it's really that, that moment where we say, you know what, devil, you're not going to continue to attack the generations. You're not going to continue to redefine our children and who they are in Christ. Enough is enough. And, and really putting that boundary line up, taking our children in and teaching them who they are in Christ and not letting the world influence them in that way is truly going to be the change that happens when people are coming into the fullness of that understanding and we're truly being countercultural in a culture that's trying to take us down paths that we were never meant to go. And so understanding that, that God does love people, but he didn't create, create them in a way that they were going to sin against him. God doesn't go against his word. He wouldn't create mankind in a way that was going to cause them to go to hell one day. It's their lack of connecting with him and understanding who they are in Christ that will truly set them free and allow them to find wholeness. So hopefully after this conversation, you have a little bit of an understanding of what transgenderism is. It's not uh, me feeling like I'm, uh, I should, it's more about an identity issue. It's not even about a same sex attraction. I was trying to wrap my head around this whole thing. And it, it's not so much about if I'm attracted to a male or a female, it's about how I see and view myself. That's what dysmorphia is. That's what transgenderism is. And it's all an issue of us being connected to our creator God. Well, this was a topic I hope we dive into more on the Joey Miller podcast.